Alrighty. I don't know if this recording is clear, if it's working. It's going to be hopefully a long one. Uh, you know, you can check the bar at the bottom of your screen. I, I don't. Okay, well, welcome. I probably haven't met you. I've, I've had 20 subscribers thereabouts at the start of this video. We'll, we'll see how we're going uh, after it's been up for a little while. All right, I'm in Australia. In Australia, the way I'm dressed, I'm a bogan. Right? This is, this is uh, I'm not really socially cool. And hopefully you're judging a book by its cover. Now, anyone who watches videos on YouTube within a minute has decided to do that. So why should you stick with me through this video? Um, ego death. Uh, I feel like I've got nothing to lose. I feel like I'm ready to have a meltdown in front of the camera. I can't guarantee it, right? Again, I, I haven't watched this video yet. I'm in the process of making it, and it is unscripted. So hopefully, there'll be a bit of a breakdown. And hopefully, with, that, with ego death comes a lack of conscientious thought, a lack of, uh, I guess, the, the, for, the, the forefront of one's mind getting in the way of a message. Now, this is a really important video in terms of messages that I would care to share, if I was going to share a message. But I make this video out of necessity, right? I feel like an empty cup right now. I feel like I, well, I said I've got nothing to lose. <laughs> I kind of feel like I've got everything to give, uh, which is weird. How, how have I got nothing to lose? Do I have so much to offer? Well, it's like many people out there, I've had a hard life and my life might not be as hard as yours. From my perspective, it might be harder. I, I don't know you, and I can only hope that you're in a healthy and well place when you're watching this video. Now, if you're in a light-hearted mood and you're watching someone about to have a meltdown on a camera, the question I put to you is, do you have the compassion, do you have the empathy to sit through with someone and maybe share some of their feelings, some of their thoughts? And why? Why does a person go to the effort? to put themselves on YouTube in the first place. Okay, so what can we possibly gain out of this? It's a pretty long intro. Most people have done that. And, and I want people who don't want to train their brains to think slower and think, right? Those people are not ready for a person to be slow in front of the camera. Now, if you're here to watch a person have a meltdown and you want to poke fun at them and laugh, the question is, why are you so hurt inside that you need to see a person fall down in order to be happy? Right now, we all laugh in the comedy show when the when the old person falls over, and, and one of the one of the young twenty somethings or some some young person is like, oh, I couldn't stop myself from laughing. Right? We we all sort of realise that there is that social that, that humans we are an empathetic being. We are an empathetic race. We all do care. But the sphere or the circle of things that we care about is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, while our fears for the things that we know we should be caring about needs to be widening. And so it's a very weird time in history because at the time when we should all be vigilant and caring and focused, it's the time where we're paying the least attention. We've got no one behind the wheel. Now, I feel like I'm flittering around a bit. I am trying to talk general concepts that are valid for everybody, but I am just a human being, and as I say, I have just had a horrible week, a horrible day, a horrible whatever. I feel as much as a person can have ego death, they've got ego death. There's no one in my life. There is no one beside me. There is no one for me to offload my problems to. But I am not going to get on YouTube and dump my problems in someone else's lap. That is half of the reason why everybody is closing down their, their circle of care, because we're all overburdened at a time when none of us feel like we're getting enough rest, at a time where we all feel overwhelmed, either through a range of pressures that I won't go into listing or else I'll make you self-conscious and I'll make you skip the video anyway. Hey, I won't do that. But I understand that people out there that are trying to disengage with their own fears and their own emotions might just look for something crunchy to come along and watch. Now, there is nothing about this video that's going to make for short little clippets and 15-second moments of 
bliss and joy. Oh, maybe. Maybe I'll be bawling my tears out. Whinging about my lost child or, or something that absolutely matters to me. Right? But I'm, I don't want to use bait and switch. I don't want to use advertising techniques or good salesmanship. All the things that are needed for a good YouTube video that makes people watch from the start to the finish. But that requires me being an arsehole. That requires me using psychology to keep you held in. Now, I've done a little bit of that. I tried to make slightly interesting framing. Okay, I went to the effort of hooking up some Bluetooth to make this slightly better quality. Okay, well, that's arguably raising my presentation quality, raising my professionalism, giving you reason to have hope or faith that the bogan has something more to offer than just falling apart in front of a camera and being laughed at. I do have something more to offer. I have observations that I guarantee you 99.9% .9 of the people behind that camera there, I've got a spider, no, it's just my wayward hair, I've got a spider walking up, I'm scared. Maybe I haven't got ego death, maybe I still care about myself. Claiming that 99% of the people don't have an awareness that I've got. Yeah, well, 99% of the people out there also have awarenesses that I don't have. I've only got a finite pool of understanding, but my backgrounds are exhaustive. No, not exhaustive. They've been exhausting to me to get them. In the 80s, I was into IT. I've grown up with computers and I understand these things right down to a chip level. Not quite at a software programming level. I backed out at that level and realised that with all the different software languages, that at the day I needed some programming done, whatever language I'd become the master of might have been outdated or redundant. So I thought, no. For the few times in life I'd need to program, I'll pay someone to do that. So I didn't focus on some things. And that's actually the greatest strength for the knowledge and the observations, hopefully I'll be able to share here, uh, is because I've been very filtered with the, the, the finite time I have to take on board information. I have used it to get relevant information. And or I've got an angel on my shoulder and the relevant information just lands in my lap at the appropriate time, which is pretty much how I find a lot of stuff in life happens. But to quote my uncle, I was an overnight success. It just took me 20 years to get here. You know, I mean, sure, I stay up at night and I read minutiae and I learn about the finite stuff and I spend days and days and days learning about one simple thing and then I've learned it and then I kind of move on. And I, okay, I keep abreast of technology news maybe or relevant social news or no, maybe not social stuff, but relevant news to the things that I'm trying to keep a track of and, and keep focused on. And I have, I have educated myself so I can share some of that maybe with you. Maybe. If you're still here at this point, you're willing to put up with a showman who might not be able to present, who's telling you they are not willing to lie to you or miss, take you down a wrong path because I respect your time, even while abusing your time and taking it from you, not being as funny as I'm hoping I'm coming across as. I'm not trying to be funny. Ego death. Um, I do have things to offer regarding technology forecasts and the way that is going. But it's not just technology. It is psychology. It is the fact that humans do not get downtime anymore. And because we are all so tired and we all have short fuses, all these little things that by themselves aren't enough for tipping point are adding up and our patience is getting thin. I say this as, as I'm someone that I feel I've got a pretty long tether for patience. And today I was at that point of either giving up and walking in front of traffic. You know, I'd, I'd stop looking left and right before you cross a road. That's always a bit of a warning sign. <laughs> I was in the mall, didn't want to make the eye contact. Ah, that's everyone in a mall. But I just wanted to get out of there as quick as possible. And I, I really today genuinely knew I was beyond my thresholds. Well, that's a lot of other people out there. Okay, And if that's you, I want you to know I do care for you. But right now, because I can't even really care for myself, I'm incapable of caring for other people. Why does that matter? Okay, well, if those who have nearly unlimited patience, if those that have... You know, I've always said, oh, I'd, I'd, I'd never commit suicide because I've got a child. Well, if I haven't got that child anymore, and if that was the one thing that kept me in check, then what is keeping me going? Well, it's not my subscribers. <laughs> not enough of them. I can't do live videos, or well, this would have been a live video. But my videos are without edits. They are raw. They are free. 
for entertainment. If I was deemed a guru, and if I was able to be supporting myself from videos, my videos would be edited. We'd have a team. The professionalism would go right up. The quality of the microphones would be fantastic. The pre-record to litmus test a scenario would be spot on. I checked for volume levels. I thought I was very soft. I tried to jam the volume up higher. I couldn't. Maybe if I lean forward, it gets a bit bassy. Maybe it's too echoey. Maybe I have to stand here. I think when I stand here, I'm nice and clear. So when I'm talking important stuff, <laughs> when I'm talking about me, <laughs> I might just get a bit closer to the camera. I don't know. I guess I'm setting up some formatting here as if I'm going to be talking for 30 minutes. That's why we're putting up with a, a poor quality camera. Look, I am doing the slow lead in. I'm going to establish some hobbies. Okay, I'm into audio. I'm into cameras. I could say photography. I'm into photography. Therefore, I'm into cameras. That might be my art outlet. I don't play a musical instrument, but I do play a CD player really well. I've played with vinyl for a bit, but once you start playing with moving coil cartridges that cost $1,000 and you only get 1,000 hours from them and you're running them into valve amps that might have 1,000 hours on them, your cost per hour to listen to music gets a little bit high. So, so maybe I'm a budget audiophile. I've got champagne tastes on a beer budget. I've got opinions on all sorts of things and equipment from phones to computers to gaming consoles, personal computers, their operating systems. Uh, the companies and their ethoses. And a lot of the different chips that go into a computer. And then, you know, the, the, the healing arts, be it the chi and, and things that actually matter, things like faith. Because religion is a big one, but we're all so bloody dogmatic that none of us can talk to each other, right? There was a time when, when countries boundaries and borders hadn't gone out too much, that generally it was like one major religion in every country. And so people in the street didn't have, they, they weren't coming from a basis of different points of view, right? Religion was something we all accepted we had and we didn't have to talk about it into people's faces. But then you get the zealots, the dogmatic ones that need to save people. And they can't have a real conversation with you because they've got to save your soul because their dogma trumps your dogma but they're not listening to your dogma. So how would they know? They don't, right? But right now, because I haven't clarified what religion I am, somebody out there is going, how dare you talk about religion so negatively? Oh, I'm not talking about religion or faith negatively. I think it's bloody one of the most important, <coughs> important things. It is. Faith heals. Even the scientists out there can see that due to placebo and, and control groups, even if faith isn't real and even if Carillion photography and the aura and, and Barbara and Brennan and Hands of Light and Chi and all these things that have been going on forever that establish there is something more to us than our physical composition of atoms, you know, this intangible energy, yeah, it's out there. A lot of people try to put a lid on it, try to have a book that says, I've got it. And if you want it, you, you learn through me the method. Yeah, well, there is a way. There is a light. And there are people that say they have been to hell and four words will get them out of trouble. I have had friends that are so atheist and so not into religion and have had a handful of melted LSD tabs. And I say my mum's friends. This isn't my friends. And they've just popped a whole bunch of acid. <laughs> And they believe they're going to die. And in the wee hours of the morning, they've called out to a God they don't believe in. And vibrationally, energetically, in their heart, they could feel being uplifted. Right? So my belief is faith heals. So that's pretty important. Probably more important than digital cameras or computers or gaming consoles or all these other things that are all failing us. Phones. Right? Yeah, they're all failing us. They've all gone down, 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 down. They claim they're getting better. And here's the problem, and here's why you want to watch this video clip and keep watching this video clip. I don't want to say subscribe because I don't want to play the game. I don't. I want to respect you. 
I don't want to have you have reasons to have heebie-jeebies or to think that another person in this world wants something from you, okay? <laughs> Just for once, can you have an honest relationship with someone and have something for free because you are loved and you are wanting to be supported by a world of people who feel that humanity should trump technology and profit? Now, I'm all for technology. But that first requires for humans to not be greedy. And if and if we're not being greedy, we need to not be fearful. Because while ever we're being fearful, we take more money than we need so that we're covered for that rainy day that might happen. So none of us are operating in our best senses. None of us are getting enough rest. And so from a perspective of being too tired to do the research in a world where everything's manipulating what we're reading, to pretend it's better than the part that went before it that actually cost real money, you've got to obfuscate the facts. You've got to make the budget part look like it's better. Right? This year's part that was built cheaper in a, in a world where everything costs more to make, and it's better somehow than last year's part. Well, that's obfuscation of numbers. It's, it's, it's using statistics to misrepresent truth. Everybody's doing it. And so we're all conditioning our brains to filter information and to learn who can we trust. I'm wearing sunglasses. You can't even see my eyes. Why would you trust me? <laughs> I get it. There's a microphone in them. That's the only reason I'm wearing them. Ah, it's look like a bogan. <laughs> maybe, maybe if one intelligent or salient thought gets out of my mouth in the course of this video, someone out there is going to go, ah, I thought he was a bogan. And then he said something that surprised me. Yeah, well, that's what I want to do in the course of this video. So, so far, I'm just establishing I can talk about nothing longingly. So I'm not giving you much hope to believe that this video is going to go in the directions I said it would, which was one of two things I absolutely still will promise you. So I will have a, either a breakdown on camera, probably, and probably multiple times while discussing some of my hobbies that have all been deprecated to the point of being completely useless, they're all going to be wiped off the planet in the next five years. Not the people, our hobbies. <laughs> they're all gone, right? A phone, that's a pro camera. Yeah. A laptop, built with worse and cheaper chips than last year, with better specs, isn't more powerful. But we think it is. Right? The gaming consoles, the best on the planet, apparently, by spec sheet warfare, is the worst on the planet in every regard. As a gaming console, everything is misrepresented. Right? Our 4K televisions have less motion resolution, generally, than really high-quality TVs that had less resolution. Motion resolution, yeah, yeah. The resolution you see on the screen when things are moving. Right? We're watching moving pictures might be important. But that's expensive. And so people would rather talk about the number of pixels as if that matters. And as someone with a photography background and a camera background and a filmography background and someone that understands the technology inside and out and has owned many great reference monitors going back many decades, two things matter. Colour, contrast. So what do they sell us? Not that. We're easy to be misrepresented to. Now, a lot of the best camera companies just packed up and left, right? It's one of the many markets that's just been deprecated to the point of the big companies don't even bother to care. The reality is we consumers keep voting with our wallets. And so the rate things are going, the world's worst operating system is gonna manipulate human beings and badger us to death. The, the worst hardware is going to hopefully not proliferate because it will kill entertainment. Our cameras are gone because spec sheets matter. Therefore, it's the number of megapixels. Yeah, again, colour and contrast, but accurate, accurate colour and contrast, maybe. Yeah, maybe. The sorts of things we chase, right? As soon as we chase something, the manufacturers re redevelop that product so that it looks like what we're after. Now, I've already said that. And I am cycling around a bit, and I'm not finishing off all my threads. apologise. But thank you for staying with me. I'll give you an example. Consumers knew that nice, bright colour monitors was what we wanted, right? 
not vivid necessarily, but it turned out there was three different technology types. Once we got rid of the cathode ray tubes, the really good ones that did what we needed to do, but they were big and they drew lots of power, we went flat screens. You know, liquid crystal displays, LCDs, is what we traditionally were using. There was three types of panels predominantly in the market. Twisted pneumatic, vertical alignment, or VA. So there was TN, twisted pneumatic, vertical alignment, VA, and in-plane switching, IPS. They each had different strengths. TN panels were cheap, really easy to drive them quick. Generally, they had the fastest frame rates. VA panels, I think, had the better contrast, potentially. Also good for high frame rate versus IPS, in-plane switching, which was the best. It had two gates per pixel. A dead pixel on, on TN or VA panels, the, the pixel was hot and stuck on. A dead pixel on an IPS panel, the pixel was stuck off. Now, I think IPS panels might work in a zero-gravity environment. Right, Plasma did, but we got rid of that. Right? It got squeezed out of the market. And so before I talk about how consumers wanted IPS and then the manufacturers went, oh, cool, high-colour IPS monitors, let's make them cheap. Right, IPS that was only 5% of the market, right, or not even, manufacturers realised, oh, consumers are coming in looking for IPS panels. How about we start making cheap six-bit colour IPS panels so that we can sell IPS because they want accurate colour, but now they're not getting accurate colour doesn't matter because they were buying IPS because it was associated with accurate colour. Right? We're easily misled. What happened to plasma? Oh, here's an example of why it is that your favourite digital camera technology or your favourite phone technology or whatever technology you're into, be it video games or something, yeah, it's destined to be driven out of the market. right? Because unless the company you support is the most anti-consumer company out there, it is going to lose its business. And while ever it's on the back burner and can't guide the market's direction, it's going to get just gradually wiped off the map. And eventually, the good company directors are going to go, whoa, we're just going to have to shut shop. So Pioneer, the leaders in plasma technology, got out of it a decade before plasma was gone from the market. They knew what was going on. They, sold, they gave their tech to Panasonic, essentially. Panasonic were making the best plasmas. If you cannot sell into California, you've got a problem. A lot of people live in the state of California. California has some environmental laws. They set an environmental cutoff for televisions that precluded plasma from being able to do 4K, right? For plasma to do finer and finer resolution required more power, basically per pixel. And they set, it was about a difference of 20 watts. It wasn't even, it was about a 10% difference, right? That LCDs could make it under the environmental law and therefore be sold as 4K sets. Easy for LCD to do 4K. That's why we got laboured with them. Right? Everyone wanted bigger screens, and the TV manufacturer went, ah, let's not remake anything. Let's just leave a couple of panels all stuck together. Right? <laughs> leave four TVs stuck together and sell it as one big one. We don't, have to re we don't have to retool fabrication plants or anything. Right? 4K. Consumers want 4K. We've got nothing to drive 4K. We've got no media in 4K. Even the best computers. I've got a 24 teraflop you know, <laughs> video card with thousands of dollars. I can tweak it to do 4K, just if I want, you know, lowish frame rates, maybe. Um, everything's fake and being misdirected. Anyway, plasma. Plasma, as an example, perfect technology. It runs in, in zero gravity, so we could have used it in space stations and stuff. Yeah, whatever. But gone, right? It was the last motion technology we had. Everything else is sample and hold, right? Here's a frame. Here's a frame. Here's a frame. Plasma is like constantly moving, like our old cathode ray tubes, right? There's pixels of light just happening. When I switched from a plasma to LCD, I, I watched the way the cat looked at the TV in a very different way. When I switched from solid state amplification, class A, or class AB, over to either class A, which is amp amplify on the up and the down wave, and over to valves, the cat paid attention, right? <laughs> so us humans, we've got, we've got limited senses, and the reason why good audio equipment is losing out to poor audio equipment is because humans, we're not consistent in the way we perceive things. And so therefore, it's easy for people to argue and argue and argue. And eventually, people argue that the really good stuff, they can't see it. And some people are really good at arguing that. And they convince other people that buying crap is the way forward. And that's where we're at with every one of my favourite hobbies. I liked my plasma screen TV. I do. I got a 4K OLED. Got a couple of them. Yeah, how's that for ego death? Bragging about all the great stuff I own. But it's all useless. And it's, it is. It's so useless. Like, I just want to trade it, right? 
So, so that 1960s bus and to fill it with the things I need to live and, you know, a couple of OLED TVs or big 4K monitors, yeah, probably not related to living, but you're still in the world of watching things through monitors. Most people consume through their phones of YouTube demographics or anything they go by. Phones, tablets, you know, not everybody consumes on TVs, but I feel that when you watch on a TV, you can't hit the like buttons and you can't hit all the buttons that gives YouTube the feedback that they actually know they're on a TV. You know, there's lots of ways to restream whatever you're on onto a TV. Maybe, I mean, I believe people watch YouTube on TVs, but we probably don't. We probably all watch streaming TV shows and, and the big networks. So I could be wrong there. It's not my most researched thing. I, I, I'm quite willing to trip over myself talking about the facts that I don't know. I will explain how confident I am when I say something. I mean, I'm totally confident that plasma left the market because of the environmental cutoff in California and that 10% that power difference where plasma was to do 4K was going to be just too high to be allowed to be sold into one state where there's a lot of people living, right? So, so Panasonic packed up with the plasma, right? I'm confident in that feature. I'm not confident for the reasons why Panasonic is pulling out of lots of different markets with their OLED TVs. They do reference grade, like Hollywood monitor uh, grade OLEDs, and they've stopped selling them into markets all around the world in different countries and they just go oh we're not selling there anymore ah oh, we're not selling there anymore yeah i've got some thoughts on that but i'm not totally confident so i won't pitch it okay so been talking a few concepts a little bit about me a little bit all over the place but i'm establishing just a little bit that i've got just a little bit of knowledge on a few different topics now, I say this not to big note myself. If you knew me today, if you knew how many tears have rolled down my cheeks and just how much I do not care for trying to big note myself, I really don't. I am being a salesperson, being a poor salesperson, because I don't want you to feel like someone is selling you something because you get enough of that during the day from everyone else, right? So in my lucid or manic state of conversation right now, yeah, I am all over the place. I am being a poor salesperson and I am hoping that is giving you reason to think, well, hang on, this ranting, rambling, I want to say loony, I wanted to do uh, another R word there, I don't know, I just wanted to roll with it. But I'm, I'm not the best presenter right now and we are not talking one topic Right, so this is not a good spiel. This is not a great video. The one that comes after this might be a much better video. I'd like to believe it will be, if this video hits a mark. In all fairness, none of my videos have ever been watched. Just about none of my videos have ever been watched. Now that's not true. My videos where I do screensavers of beautiful things, yeah, they get watched. Right? No actual meaningful content for anyone, ah, but they do bring joy, right? So I'm glad to see that people generally click on things that make them happy. That's good. Because the opposite, right, and this is what you do see, is that people get into forums and go and watch videos that make them angry. And I've seen a comedian and I've seen people get up on stage and, and make that very clear observation that, that if, you, if you hear me, Right, if you, are, if you come across my video and you hear me say something that offends you, right, well, that's between you and me. But if you then tell your friends to come and watch something that's going to make them angry, right, yeah, that's between you and them, okay, because by myself, no one's going to discover my little video feed, right? So it's a word of mouth thing. If you feel there is value in chasing sadness and chasing anger, okay, we are in very different places, okay? Now, I will confirm I'm in a park, a national park. I've tried to take myself away from the people, but I, I can just hear there's people moseying around. I'm actually in, uh, it's a radio tower. It's a, um, yeah, it's a bit of a tangent. Uh, this is the, it was very, very tall. It was for Morse coding around the world, and it was a very, very high point, but they, they've had to actually remove it because of low-flying planes. <laughs> so it's been uh, deconstructed. But uh, this was one of three giant steel cables that would have been going straight through this little tunnel that you and I are currently talking through, and it would have gone way up there, and it would have been a mount point for a very, very tall radio communications tower. But I'm actually up on, a, on the top of a hill 
where that was uh, based. And I'm arguably it's a touristy location, so uh, it's a weekend. People are coming around and uh, hopefully enjoying themselves. I can't see them. I can't hear them. I've tried, as I said, to remove myself from the general public. I uh, needed to find a location where there'd be no wind so I could talk longingly. And uh, when I went to review the video, I didn't just sit there going, oh, it's unlistenable. But gee, I'm, I'm visually animated. Yeah. yeah, I'm fun to watch, but shame that, you know, <laughs> the stupid things I'm saying couldn't be heard. So I do wish to be heard. Okay, so what have I got to say? Well, I don't want to do the doom and gloom video, right? For a couple of years, for all the videos I've been making, I have been refusing to do the doom and gloom video. And it's not the catastrophic one. I'm not talking weather patterns. I'm not talking that we need to build a pyramid like every other intelligent civilization that's figured out that pole shifts happen every however many thousands of years. And then all of a sudden, you know, people aren't slaves. It's just people unifying and going, hey, we need to build a structure that's going to withstand, you know, a crazy change of either temperature or, or weather patterns or whatever. Right? That, that's doom and gloom. No, no, no. I, I, my doom and gloom videos aren't that at all. My doom and gloom videos are based on the actual very real facts in front of us which is people are greedy, people are easily misled, we are all yellow belt consumers, so we think we know how to research our purchasing decisions and we, with much confidence, buy into platforms that are rapidly being buried and obfuscated. Okay, so how is that doom and gloom? Well, the companies learn their cutoff points, right? So I'll give an example of one that uh, the Australian government does. When I say the Australian government, that's a bit picky. Yeah, I like my government. The um, Australia Postal Service, right? If you have a complaint about a lost postage stamp that's not even worth a dollar, the wait time on hold is more than 30 minutes. Now, most people earn more than $2 an hour. Most people value their free time. Most people would not stay on that phone long enough to complain. Now, I've had lots of grievances with all the telcos, lots of big companies. Either they've done a recall on a camera and then lost it, and I can waste hundreds of hours trying to get in communication with them to no avail. Now, you can say that's okay, you can get an ombudsman, you can get someone to fight for you, right? But actually what's happening is that all the companies are learning which consumers they wish to target. Because some consumers have more money than cents, and they don't believe in consumer ethics, and they don't fight the battles, their time is too valuable, they've got more money, and so they just choose to go out and buy the new part that works. You say, what do you mean buy the new part that works? Well, you've got to remember, now everything has forced updates. Now, forced updates are wonderful. I'll give you an example, the wonderful sound bar that's connected to my TV took a forced update, right, without me letting it go on the net. Using Bluetooth, at one time it was connected to my phone, it then went through my phone and updated itself. And from that point forward, every time it would turn on, right? So you'd, you'd turn on your movie player and a little ping would go down the signal, picture, to, towards the television. But on the way towards the TV, it would go through the sound bar. And as it goes into the sound bar, the sound bar goes, oh, I'm going to wake up. It starts waking up. And then it passes the video signal onto the TV. And the TV wakes up. And then the TV, because it's got an audio return channel down another HDMI cable, which is also plugged into the soundbar, then goes, hey, I'm now putting out sound. And then the soundbar, this is the newly updated one against my wishes, the soundbar then changes over to the audio return channel. Now that by itself wouldn't be too bad. That, that there just means I went from five channels of sound down to two channels of sound. Okay, but it's still working, right? But after that firmware update, not only did it do something I didn't want it to do, which it had never done before, it was really great in that it then swapped itself over to optical input, an input that I wasn't even using. It does this every time now. I have given it multiple firmware updates. It's not going to be fixable, right? I've changed the way things are plugged in. And it's very, very sad, but... It was two and a half years since it had been sold on the market. They knew that it was time for people to upgrade. There's only a finite number of fat cats that are willing to put down the money and constantly buy new stuff, and you've got to always force them forward. Right? So Apple led the horror story. I like the Apple operating system. OS X is the basis of it. It's one of the best operating systems on the planet. It's 
uh, hardware agnostic. It can run on ARM, it can run on X, you know, x86, it can run on like, any chipset. Uh, when they first released it, they actually had a version running on RISC and CISC chips at a time when, when Apple was sort of stuck in the power PC slash RISC world. They were just like, ah, oh, look, we can run it on, on the, the generally known to be big, meaningless numbers, but it looked impressive and that's what everyone was buying. So, so the, the, the CPUs that everyone bought because they looked by the numbers like they were five times quicker, but they weren't really. Um, Apple knew they needed to switch architectures. And so in the 90s, they had this new operating system that, that was platform agnostic. They could have it run on anything. And it's a really good operating system, right? So I, I like where Apple has come from. But here's the thing. They started rolling out security updates with updates for the hardware, operating system updates. It wasn't evil at first. But when operating system updates forces redundancy of the hardware before it, things start getting a little bit dodgy. Okay, now Apple were the leaders of that. Now Apple are really good with it in that they generally keep their older hardware cycles still supported for a very long time. But the difference with Apple is they own hardware, they own software, they're making money in enough areas of the pie that they don't have to sell you another phone two years from now in order to maintain a trillion dollar status. Right? That's not true in the Android camp. That's not true for all other manufacturers. And so if you're a chip maker, Qualcomm, and you need, oh, I shouldn't give names, I'm not picking on any business here, but if you're a chip maker and your revenue is, is to have, you need to make new sales, you need to have your old hardware deprecated so that people go out and buy the new hardware. Now, I'll give you an example. This one's highly unethical. Class action lawsuit should be, and this is why you might want to listen to me because you might learn something. Again, nobody in the world knows this stuff. There's, there's, there's a handful. We're, we're 0. 0.000 something of a percent, and the few of us are too busy out there working. Not me. I'm dressed like a bogan. Hence, hence I'm here discussing, right? And, and this is where forums all over the world aren't filled with the intelligent people they need to be filled with. They're filled with the hobbyists who have the free time and are wandering around, and it becomes a case of the blind leading the blind. Right, but, but about five years ago, no, about, about seven years ago now, a bit more than that, maybe seven, eight years ago, there was a vulnerability right, that came out that required an update to patch and fix a security issue. Right, now that's not true, right? It was an engineered, right, it was a theoretical uh, issue. It had been demonstrated once in a situation that no one on the planet would ever do. And they, they wanted this, that they'd gone out of their way to find this fallibility. They knew it was there all along, right? These are the people who engineered the chips and they knew that it would never be exploited, but they figured out a way to exploit their own chip and then patched it to take 10 to 20% off it. They actually did three patches which broke a lot of machines because they were being forced through Windows, right? You couldn't choose to not get them. And you never want a firmware update your motherboard or CPU, right? And if they got mismatched, you were literally throwing away $1,000 as a hardware, top of the line motherboard, high end desktop it was. And that was the problem, is it was the most expensive desktop platform they'd ever released. It was still really powerful a few years later. And the new chips were being sold into a cost conscious market and couldn't use as much silicon and couldn't require such high end equipment. They had to be sold budget, but they had to be faster or people wouldn't upgrade to them. So it was a time in the market when Intel, bastards, and the Wintel, the Wintel Consortium, yeah, it's a thing. <laughs> Those guys are friends. They got together and they, they announced the weakness, right? Something that is never done. They said, here's how you do it. And they said, we have to patch this out. And they took away over three consecutive updates that broke a lot of machines a significant amount of the raw speed. They basically took the cache away, and the cache is what you do when you launch a new chip. You use a lot of cache and a slow speed because it guarantees you a certain amount of performance, but cache runs hot and it stops you being able to run the chip faster. Once you can optimise the design, you can take a bit of the cache out because you can actually run the chip quicker because you've figured out the thermals across the die. So the chips were starting to get quicker, but they were starting to be cheap. They needed to sell them. They deprecated the old, okay? forced security updates, right? And they got away with it, right? And this is the thing about humans, we're greedy, right? And because of fear, we keep taking. And it was established right there. So right here, we've got, 
we got forced security updates with operating systems. It wasn't evil when it first came out, but became evil very, very quickly. Now it's used to deprecate hardware all the time. We've had established moments in history where the um, yeah platform can just be deprecated and not enough people complain, right? They wait till it's, it's three years out of sync, right? And the people that own the hardware that have the money, they no longer care. They've got no value out of it. They've got their tax write-off out of the set of equipment. It's now being passed on to a kid or the next person. They're obviously broke. Those people don't lawyer up, right? These companies are clever in the timescales they work to. They're all figuring out how to choose their target market. And this is the tangent I'm trying to close down here, which is why am I relevant to you? Well, at the moment, you might not need me. At the moment, you might think everything I'm talking about isn't relevant. The problem is, is that every business on the planet is tightening its belt. Every business on the planet is, is reframing and reforming itself in order to sell you a cheaper, worse product in a way that you won't even know. What do you mean you won't even know? Spec sheets have to get better. Okay, audio market. Right, this isn't the bit in the video I want to do this, but I've got to admit, I'm fatigued. And if I forget to circle back to it, you know, cir circling around can be fun. Here we go. Um, yeah, the audio market, right? One of the most expensive parts in an amplifier are the heat sinks. Heat sinks are expensive. Just bits of metal that sit on hot spots, and those, those bits of metal are generally made to be thin so that the heat can just get out of the way and, and cool everything down. And usually the, the nature of heat rising pulls air through equipment. Works really good, passive fanning. So, well, it's not fanning. Fanning's an actual word, I guess, for movement. But, um, yeah, <laughs> there's a term and I'm too tired. Uh, so, yeah, just, just thermals. And heat sinks can easily be a significant amount of the cost of an amplifier. Well, in a world financial crisis, after 20 years of businesses tightening their belts and having supply lines and inventory management that's so tight and they can rely on everything getting to them straight away, right, before shortages happened all around, right, Everyone had tightened their belt so tight, there was no more leeway. And then a couple of world events happen simultaneously that changes everything up for everyone, right? Businesses have never had to tighten their belt so much. Now, okay, I'm into hobbies, and every one of my hobbies, combined with every world financial crisis, you can look at how the equipment gets made worse and gets sold higher, right? It's just the way it has to go, right? <laughs> the people at the top need to have us all push that money up there, right? They have to. So that's the way it goes. Well, with the latest world financial crisis, a lot of the audio companies went to the governing body that sets the standards and the measurements and makes sure that everything meets up to the specs. And they went, can we not sustain our power envelope? Like, for example, you've got an amp that says it's 100 watts. It might have to sustain 100 watts of peak power for, say, 30 seconds. Uh, that's the old rule, right? Because the, the standards body went, yeah, sure. You don't have to sustain that power. All the companies went, cool. We don't need heat sinks anymore. Basically, we can we can save so much money because as long as it can hit that that amount of output power for even a brief moment, we can label it as doing that. So it allowed them to keep the spec sheets the same, right? All, all the, the harmonic distortions and all, all the little numbers that we actually care about and we're reading about, right? They all look just as good, if not better, right? They could even claim better numbers because they didn't have to sustain any of it. And so all of us white belt consumers or yellow belt consumers, we go out and we read the spec sheet and this year's model looks better than last year's model. A couple of little caveats. Weighs a lot less. <laughs> Sells for a bit more. Doesn't sound as good. And that's the problem, right? Everything's getting deprecated. So coming full circle, why does it matter to you? Why do you want somebody like me to be an advocate for you? You do. You really do. You don't even know it, but you do. You, you need me because I know we need people to be vigilant and sentinels and call out the tech companies, right? Now, I have no personal power. If this video wasn't so long, I'd, I'd pitch you an idea right now, and I'd say, right, if you give me a dollar, right, if everyone gives me a dollar, I can go in and I can, I can fight some of these battles. Now, you say fight these battles, okay, it doesn't all mean requiring to be litigious, right, over small things that are just about to be outdated. Sometimes it's the small stuff. I'll give you an example. A company of phones makes a particular type of earbud. The particular type of wireless earbud they use uses a particular codec to talk to those earbuds. Because they want that codec to reign supreme, because they want to sell their earbuds to match their phone hardware and not have other people use other people's products, from the Android stack, they pulled out some of the Bluetooth codecs that actually came with the phone when you first bought it. 
right? You've got an operating system update. And even though the, 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 the default the default Android uh, package would have those Bluetooth codecs, this particular phone company would pull them out of the updates, right? So when your phone gets that forced update, you lose the ability to get high quality sound from your pre-existing parts. Every company is currently trying to figure out a way of how do we sell you new stuff that you don't need, force you to do it, and have you not complain in the process, right? And so they're figuring out who their customer base is. And bit by bit, they realize that the low socioeconomic people are the people who do ring up and stay on that phone for 40 minutes and, and are willing to discuss, oh, you guys, you've gone a bit too far. You've made my old phone not work, right? Every so often, they put out an update because enough people complain, right? Enough people complain simultaneously. But they know that, that three years from now, Right, new products sold three years from now. Some people complain. Most people have moved to new hardware. Not a lot of people complain at that point, right? And if people do, they go, oh, here's a patch that fixes it. And then six months later, they pull the stun again, right? And, and a lot less people complain. And over time, a lot less people complain, and eventually they get away with it. Well, this is going to be every tech product. This is going to be every product. Now, when companies get away with this, when we don't hold them accountable, we set the precedent for it to go on. The scariest thing, we weaponized medicine. We let people get away with accidentally, and I believe it was an accident, accidentally releasing something. But because all the investigative bodies went, nah, we don't really know, we've now just said to every medical institute around the world, right, because you play with viruses in order to get the solutions to them, right? We've just said to everyone, whatever solution you've got ready to go, right, if your business is about to go bankrupt, if you just release the strain that you've got the solution to, your company might just become the richest company on the planet. And we've set the precedent of letting people off the hook if they get caught for doing it, right? So we've weaponized medicine, right? The best of humanity has been, right? We're all living in a state of fear. We're all shutting down our little circle of care right? Because we're all just overwhelmed, right? All the, the constant frequencies going through us. We're not getting deep sleep at night. None of us are getting a state of rest. Everyone's getting diagnosed ADHD. We're, we're all going, oh, I'm disabled. I don't have to care about things beyond me. And to be honest, I don't have the focus to focus on something long enough to do it anyway. So we're in dire times. And yes, we do need people to rise up. Now, I'm not trying to stop anything. We're all marching towards a cliff. I just want us to change direction. I've got some solutions for how we can do it, right? That's another video. But as I say, no one ever watches any of my videos. Today, I hope this has been in some way entertaining. The battery in my microphone has either died or is dying. So I'm going to have to jump off the video now. But if you feel that we've, we've gotten off this video too quick at the end and I didn't get my breakdown done and you need to see me in another video, I am here and it's not just for me. Because if, if I was on this video just for me, I'd be sitting just here just crying, just letting it out. Alrighty, leave a comment, please. If you've invested this much time and shared this moment with me, let me know. I really look forward to being able to write some words back. Okay, well, uh, looking a bit awkward now. I'm going to have to come at you just so I can hit the stop button. <laughs> Alrighty.